immersion in stories is an important part in the history of storytelling. Beginning with the verbal telling of stories, people would act out certain events, change their voices to mimic another person or animal or object, and even dress appropriately for the act. Continuing through the history of art, theatre, novels, and cinema have used these techniques to suck the viewer into the world of the story. Virtual reality has often been sought out as a technology that would, in theory, immerse the audience into a story to the extent that they would not be able to distinguish art from reality. For the longest time, it was assumed that VR would be the next level of cinema, but that changed with the introduction of video games. Video games added another layer of immersion to art, as the player was able to control the protagonist, and in some cases, the story and how the story would unfold, especially with the modern generation of video games. VR is perfect for that medium, but it was not immediately that that idea was realised. The earliest example of virtual reality are the panoramic paintings made in the 19th century. These paintings ran around 360 degrees and were usually paintings of battles, such as this painting, which is the Battle of Borodino. While these paintings were in 2D and did not move, it had that quality that is important to VR today, that of complete immersion with one scene. This concept was abandoned for future attempts at VR over the next century, as new technologies have evoked new versions of VR. For example, the stereoscope. This was a small viewer that put two images side by side, and due to the brain processing the images as one, made them look like one three-dimensional image. You can't wrap that image around like a panoramic painting. However, it does have something that the panoramic painting does not have, which is the three-dimensional value. To add immersion, three-dimensional images would add a sense of realism to the image, as long as you had two eyes, two working eyes. The 60s brought us many technological leaps in the development of VR. The first head-mounted display, or HMD, was created in the Telesphere Mask, a headset that would cover both the eyes and the ears of the user as it added another sense of immersion to the technology. A year later, the headsight would be created for military use. This would be the first headset that would actually involve motion tracking and would be able to simulate, well, military escapades as you would. The headsight was used to view perilous situations from a remote location. It wasn't until over 50 years after the headsight was created that VR, as we know it, came to the public. In 2012, a Kickstarter campaign was started for a device called the Oculus Rift, an HMD that was advertised as the first truly immersive virtual reality headset for games. This device utilized stereoscopic 3D and motion tracking to make the user feel like they were inside the video game. There was an initial fear when VR first came out. As stated, gaming, concerts, family reunions, sporting events, even sex, all of it will be experienced in a hyper-real fashion with a commonness that technologists predict will rival our incessant smartphone use today. But of course, to this day VR really hasn't latched on as they had predicted. Of course, smartphones still reign and cinema and video games are very much their own separate things, but are very prominent nonetheless with VR just being a technological asset rather than being a cultural revolution. VR has primarily been used for video games, however it has been used for films, uh, exhibitions and live events. As stated, the National Basketball Association capitalised on VR capabilities to help bring fans closer to the action. For the 2016-2017 season, the league partnered with Next VR to bring NBA League Pass subscribers select regular season games with virtual reality. Some live shows, like the Chris Gethard show, would use VR in order to make the audience feel like they were watching the show live. While this displays the diverse applicability of VR technology, it is of course not the only use. VR usually comes with something along the lines of these. 
What I'm holding in my hand right here is a motion control. Uh, this is, of course, the PlayStation Move controller. Um, these are meant to help to simulate the movement of your hand. Of course, it comes in pairs. Um, and, of course, you have easy trigger fingers for your thumb to interact with and your pointer finger to interact with, with start and select buttons on the side. It's all very easy, it's all very maneuverable, with straps to attach to your hands just in case it gets dramatic. These actually allow you to, of course, control the character's arms in the video game. Like in Skyrim VR, you could pull out a sword for your right hand and a ball of fire in your left hand and use them how you will. These motion controls add a layer of immersion to the game because of course you have perfect interactivity with the game. Now of course you can't actually physically pick things up yourself because it's still a video game, it's still a projection of something else. But what you may have noticed is that Skyrim was not made for VR. In fact it was released in 2011 before the Kickstarter campaign for Oculus was even announced. What's interesting about VR is how, because it's become such a strongly video game focused technology, video game companies and creators of games such as Skyrim and Subnautica, popular games that were created with no intention of VR, have since been developed for VR and have become some of the strongest uses of strong game narrative VR. This is the convenience and the cleverness of VR. It allows you to interact with your hands and it allows you to, of course, interact with your head and your eyesight. Another modern use of the technology is short films. While there have been attempts at bringing VR to cinema, none of them have made a lasting impact. The most popular form of VR short film is the VR trailer for a Hollywood studio blockbuster, a trend that peaked in 2017 and doesn't really occur today. These were short films designed to show a popular upcoming action or horror film from a different viewpoint. Kong Skull Island's VR film takes the point of view of a soldier on a helicopter that is eaten by King Kong, while Alien Covenant's VR short film In Utero takes the point of view of a neomorph incubating within a human body and eventually bursting out and killing a person. Both of these scenes benefited from being a development from an actual scene in both of these two films, However, this was more of a display of 360 video as you can find the films on YouTube. That was their main source of where you can find them. Uh, and unfortunately, that doesn't really allow you to plug on a headset. And even if you do, you're just moving your head around when even the character itself realistically shouldn't be able to move their head 360, for example. In the King Kong one, you are a soldier. A soldier should only be able to look left and right unless they have to turn their whole entire body. They're not an owl because they're a human. Whereas in the Alien one, you are a Neomorph, which, again, is still humanoid in structure. So why would you be able to look in a 360-degree angle? So there's obviously logic that doesn't really apply to this outside of the fact of, of course, you have no control of the characters. You are just watching what is going to take place as if you are watching a film. Most of these as well are made with pretty rudimentary CGI, so it doesn't really completely influence the experience. Um, and outside of that, they were pretty much all used for mobile phones as the VR phone um, enterprise with the pretty much cardboard version of a VR headset had its craze and boom in 2017, but pretty much died off after that as it was mostly a novelty. And that's the key word here, novelty. VR as cinema gives the audience a short thrill, but it would never sustain like video games in VR do. Cinema has been shot exactly the same, save for a few minor technological innovations, for over a century, and people still go out to see them. Video games, on the other hand, are always evolving, always expanding. The interactive nature of VR, in which you move your head to control the camera, could be considered a video game in and of itself, and this kind of adds to the attribute of the fact that you are playing as the character in the game. This is because you as a player are controlling an element of the presentation. Compare VR to 40X, which is a form of cinema that markets itself off immersion. Despite seeming to be Similar on the outset, there is no interactive element to 40x, 
it is closer to a theme park ride than a VR system, but it still involves sitting in a room in front of a screen meant for shared consumption with other audience members and watching, not moving. The ride film is a form that experimented with combined film and theme park ride technologies that were intent on targeting the participant through multiple senses in order to produce an immersive effect. This being said, 4DX lacks that fundamental element that VR prevails in, player control. The total sensory immersion of VR is an attempt to recreate the psychological immersion that regular cinema offers. While this works for active audiences, it dismisses the casual audience who would prefer to, you know, dull their own senses. They'll block their eyes, they'll block their ears, they'll do whatever they can to get out of the film if something, of course, is not what they want to see or hear. While VR incorporates this response with reactive footage and re-immersion, this inherently makes the adaptability more suitable for video games than cinema. VR technology has been dreamed of and developed for far longer than video games, but its combination with video games and further development has really given it a true, proper, immersive purpose that connects with the audience. For a film, it is being, it's a picture that's been directed by someone else, whereas for a VR game, you as the player have the complete immersion to control what the character does and to control what you see and what you hear. And though VR could be used effectively for the recording of live shows or for short films, its marriage with video games has really cemented what the platform was meant to be made for from the get-go. Excellent. Um, thanks for watching. This has been a video essay I actually did for uni with um, my two friends, Simone and Guy. They actually wrote uh, the script. I added minor details, but the whole point was for it to be a collaborative thing. Um, so thank you to Simone and Guy for making sure this was written. Uh, I, I liked it. It was, it was good that we all were able to collaborate on what topic we wanted to do, and I thought VR was an interesting aspect outside of the fact that I literally own a VR headset and can feel myself being a weirdo playing VR games. So that was fun. Um, of course, I had the joy of being able to film it all, record all the audio, and edit the whole entire thing, so that didn't stress me out in my last three days before it was due. Haha, <laughs> no, totally. It's not 1am right now, I swear. This clip, of course, is specific for um, YouTube as the final version that will be handed into my teachers won't, of course, have me talking specifically to the camera. So yeah, uh, if you enjoyed this video, feel free to like, share, and subscribe for more. If you, if you enjoyed elements of this video or want to dispute that I suck at talking about VR because I don't know my shit, <laughs> I don't know my shit either. I got two people to do it for me. Can't blame me now, can you? Um, but if, if you'd like me to do something like this in the future, talk about something gaming-wise, I mean, I have done some video game Let's Plays in the past, um, but it's not really my thing. But if you want me to do videos, essays that talk about the kind of technological innovation about it or the technological innovation of cinema, you probably don't, but still, I'm just going to suggest it. Um, feel free to, you know, it's always fun. Uh, and, yeah, uh, see you guys in the next video. Hope you enjoyed. Adios.